Hello my dudes and welcome back to Minecraft Mine Colonies Byzantine. We're here in All The Mods 9 building an amazing looking Byzantinian colony. As you can see behind me, the city is doing really, really, really well. We've got the military district over there, the university, the docks and harbour, the garden section, the industrial district with the warehouse and the machinery. And then over there, St. Mary herself, or is, is she a saint? Yeah, sure, we'll say she's a saint, but she's looking over the retail district and there's a tavern as well, and we're standing on top of the hospital. So what I've done between episodes is I've tidied up that area that we looked at last time. As you can see, these walls have been upgraded from levels one all the way up to level three, and the guard towers as well have gotten that treatment. They're level five now, and they look freaking amazing. The harbour has also been prepared, but it's not full of water yet, because we're going to see if we can fill that in with the builders. And also you can see around the edge where the mountain was looking a bit shoddy and a bit kind of, you know, not very nice. We put down some retaining walls as well to bring that area up too. So this area is looking, for the most part, kind of complete. All that's ready to go in are two things. Number one, some stairs, because our colonists are going to need a way to get around. Also, we need some buildings down here, and that's why this episode, we're going to be trying to work out what we need more of. Okay, so here we go. Now we have a brand new fresh area to work with, but what I'm trying to work out is what we need more of, because now, on the Byzantinian colony, we have one of every single type of building. But the question is, what are we kind of lacking? We've got a lot of recipes over in the uh, the sawmill and the masonry, so I'm not sure we need to actually add any more of those production buildings. What are we going to add over here? Well, it's kind of like a docks district, so while it would be nice to kind of theme things around the docks, I'm not quite sure what we can add. There's definitely maybe a ship that can go in the harbour, and I'm also thinking maybe another insulae to get our population even higher. In fact, let's head on over to the town hall and see what our population is looking like these days. Oh yeah, roasty toasty, look at this. So we are at 105 citizens at the moment in the colony. That's a huge amount. And, well, look at this. 87 of them could be knights, archers, or druids. That's crazy. So I'm not quite sure we do actually need another insulae. What we do need to do, though, is get 45 more dudes in the colony. Get these numbers up. These are rookie numbers. We need to pump that. Pump it like a bicycle tire. Oh yeah. And that always begins over here at the tavern. So let's go check out these new dudes and see if I can get some Patreon members into the colony. So D's Nuts Dawn, I've got your diamonds right here. Actually, I think they're in my backpack. Yeah, there we go. Let's take some of those, give them to you. And I always try and walk around the colony with enough materials in my backpack so I can hire any of these random guys that appear at the tavern in case there's someone that really piques my interest that I want to get in the colony super quick. So what will it be for you? It's always good to have the materials on hand. So I've got some redstone in here as well. What is it? Welcome to the crew, Kyle Snowman. Oh, and these guys are going straight into the guard's house just as I thought. 87 dudes we can have. And we need to swell those numbers because last episode we built the rallying banner. And this has got 38 rallied guard towers in the bag. That means, in theory, 38 guards should answer the call whenever a raid comes a knocking. Anyway, let's see if we can get some more dudes. Espia Mahogany, oh, I love the last name, and the first name ain't too shabby, too. Ooh, Enchanted Books, though. So Enchanted Books are one of the things that makes it a bit awkward to hire new dudes. Usually their requirements aren't Enchanted Books. It's something simple, like sunflowers, which I have loads of. But enchanted books, I'm not sure. Maybe there's a way that I can start like an enchanted book farm. I'm not sure if it's worth it though. And who's that up there? Decoy Shreve. Let's go and grab you. Good to see ya. Ah yeah, 37 books. That's a bit more regular. There you go, my friend. So there we go, a nice new injection of named colonists. Wait, who's that over there? They just appeared? Alex Slunter. Oh no, he's just got a speech bubble. He's staying- Oh right, he lives in the tavern. Okay, well, you know, it's a choice. But to get 45 more dudes, well, I think it's about like 41 more dudes now, we're gonna need to get a bit more of a colony injection going on. So before I call it a night, because the moon is high in the sky, 
Oh man, yeah, looking pretty freaking incredible over those trees. Before we call it a night, I'm going to go over and make sure the kids will be born. That's a pretty important option to turn on every now and again. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, the bee's stuck. Tell you what, bro, we're going to rescue you and I'm not going to I'm not going to incinerate you like last time. Let's see if I can do this. Here we go. I'm going to break this wall. Oh, there you go. Be free, my brother. Be free. Can I, can I push you? No. There we go. Yeah. Oh, he's free. Amazing. Where's... Oh, no. He's going into the town hall. Oh, freaking hell. You're going to go sting somebody, my friend? I hope not. So, bam. Kids will be born. We're going to turn that on. And we should start to get a massive injection of new children now. Oh, and there we go. Rogue Ronebone. Already we're getting the numbers pumping in like crazy. But this is good. Now that we've got a few schools up and running, the kids are going to go straight to school. Oh, Nazim Guy. Let's see if I can afford you. If you say so. Gold. Do I have any gold on me? I don't think I do, actually. Six bars. Oh, and I'm running low on gold. But it's okay. Children being born is by far the most efficient way for you to get new colonists in. And also, their stats aren't going to be too bad since they are going to go to school before they grow up. Anyway, let's start thinking about what we're going to be building this episode. So I want to put down, hmm, what do we want to build? Well, let's take a look at the Mine Colony's building, see if anything jumps out at us. Well, do you know what? I'm feeling like maybe another tavern might be a choice. And something I've never thought about, never really experimented with, is can you get more than one tavern on a colony? I used to think you couldn't, but now I'm not so sure. So we're going to try and place this down, see if we can actually build this. We're also going to do some research, see if we can get some more people in our colony, and that means we're going to need residences as well, so we'll make a few of these too. So there we go, 16 residences, it's a bit overkill, but you know what, I reckon a nice big insulae is going to be pretty sweet for us right now. Now as you can see over here at the university, we've got some weird framed black concrete lying around. This is kind of poked up through the floor, and the first time I saw this I was like, Oh no, what's happened? What, why do we have weird bits of black concrete on the floor? Turns out it's because we have finished building the basement. I think I told you this last time, but we never had a look at what's going on down there. So, before we call it a night and go and work on the harbour, we're going to take a look downstairs and investigate this basement. Oh yeah! Now this is underneath the university and you get the decoration over here that you can right click to get this built. It doesn't really have a function. There's a couple of guard towers down here, and I think I probably forgot to add these to my rallying banner, so we'll do that now. Planter Genista. But yeah, what, what's going on down here? Well, um, oh, there's one over here as well. There's a lot of Latin. There's a lot of weird decoration. I'm not quite sure. Um, there's some mushrooms and some plant pots. Okay. And honestly, down here is a bit of a maze. I have no idea how to get around here. Nolly Essie Asinus. Okay. Doesn't seem to do anything. Maybe it does. Oh man, yeah, it's really easy to get lost down here. This place is a crazy maze. But when you do find your way around, there's a few little kind of Easter eggs, like Lux Est Bonum. No idea what that means. Tenebrae Exitium. Sure. Semper Vident Clara Parte Vitae. Okay, so if you guys know Latin, let me know what these signs actually say, because, you know, I'm kind of curious. But Latin was never something I paid attention to in school, so I have no idea. Quid est? Now, if you're not careful, you're going to miss this cool secret area. Basically here, this looks like a black wall. Turns out it's not, and there's a secret area through here. Oh yeah, the secrets of the Byzantinian style. Skyate Ipsium. And oh my god, what's going through going on through here? This is weird. Oh my god, it's the light. I think we're walking into the light. Is this heaven? Are we going to heaven? Um Yeah, that's that's it. Wacky. Oh, what's this through here? Oh my god. Even more crazy designs. Now, I have no idea what this area is supposed to be. It's crazy. Um, 
maybe it is supposed to be like your journey to heaven. But anyway, the journey ends over here. It doesn't look like there's another way out. And that's it. Wait, what's this? Oh. Oh. Oh, secret room. Wait a minute. What is what is going on here? This is wacky. Oh. Oh. Ah, and we're back at the entrance. Oh my god, thank god. So I thought we were lost. We are actually found. Nice little secret entrance over there. That's pretty weird, but also pretty cool. Let's get the hell out of here, get some sleep, and get to the harbor district. So here we are, and now we're down on the floor. You can see how truly massive and sprawling this harbor area is. So like I said, we're going to try and use the build tool to, uh, to put down some water in here and fill up the harbor. Now how do you do that? Well, I'm fairly sure there is a way. So what we can do is we can get a scan tool from Structurize. You need an iron ingot and two sticks. Shouldn't be too tricky to make, but with this, you can basically select an area and tell your builders to remember it and place it somewhere else. It's kind of like a rudimentary copy and paste. So a couple of sticks, we'll make four, that'll do fine. Put an iron ingot over here, and we have an iron wand, or flip it around. We got the scan tool. Boom. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and, oh, whoops. We're going to try and scan an area of water, which sounds a bit weird. Well, let's get rid of that, floating in the air. And what this is going to do is it's basically going to dredge an area underneath the harbor and fill it with water. Now, I thought there was a dredge decoration somewhere, but I can't seem to find it. But this is also a good opportunity to show you guys how the scan tool works as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to select an area of water over here. Should be pretty simple. We'll use some wood as the placeholder blocks. Get plenty of this. Now we want a nice big area to turn into water. So what we're going to do is mark a location here as one corner of where we're going to go. Come over here and find a nice big area to do this. We're not going to fill in the whole of the harbor with one of these, but we're going to use two, I reckon. There we go. So we've got a bit of a square going on here. We brought this up to sea level. Now we're going to use the scan tool, scan number one. We're going to right click, second position set. Cool. And get rid of this wood. Then we come over here, left click on this piece of wood, position one set. Now we can remove that piece of wood as well. Right click in the air, and you can see we get a white border around a big flat piece of water. Amazing, this is exactly what we want. So now we can call this water. Okay, amazing. So we have water there, the scan name. If we press tick now, scan successfully saved as water blueprint. So if we go to the build tool now, we can right click. What this should do, we go to the switch pack, local, it'll be your character name. Select that, and we have in here scans. We have a few of these from our other kind of episodes and things. But what we're really looking for is water. There we go, right? So we'll tick the box. Oh, looks like there was some seagrass in the uh, in the little kind of catchment area. Not the end of the world. We can go around with some, uh, some shears, grab some of that. But we can... Oh, whoops. No, don't do that. Oh, no. Now, as always, if you accidentally put down a decoration, you can always come over to the town hall go to existing work orders and cancel this building, the water. Yeah, let's stop Leo before he digs up all of that retaining wall it took us so long to build. Oh my god, look at these guards. Wait a minute, am I? Oh yeah, I think I'm rallying the guards. So these guards are all following me around. Oh man, look at this guy. You want to be a guard? Not yet, son. Not yet, son. Do some growing, then you're going to join the team. Oh man, that's cool. So now we get a veritable army following us around. This is amazing. Oh, I love it. Look at these guys. They are rabid. Oh, can you imagine these guys going to town on a new dude? On like a barbarian raid? Maybe not um, Aquamumu over here because he's only got, only got leather armor. Oh my god, these guys are yawning. This is nuts. Well, come on guys, let's go and build the harbor district. They following? Oh my god, yeah, they're following. That's crazy. That's crazy. Do you know what? With all of these guys right on my tail, I'm kind of hoping we get a raid tonight, or at least in a night soon. But for now, we're going to send these guys home because we don't need this many guards. Dismiss them. That's right, guys. Go back to go back to what you were doing. They're probably going to go and storm the restaurant now and get some food. Oh, man, that's crazy. Look at all these dudes. Nuts. So, yeah, we have the build tool now. We'll right-click, find water in my blueprints. There we go. 
move this around. It's difficult to see while we're in it, but as you can see, yeah, oh, look at this, a nice big block of water. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we want to park this on the bottom of the harbour, level with the water over there. So let's go over here, make sure this all matches up. And this is a pretty cool trick, but this isn't locked to water. Basically, if there's anything out in the world that you love the look of, you can drag a big square around it, copy it, remember it, and get your builders to build it in future. This, this applies to absolutely everything. So if you find a player-made structure out in the world, like perhaps that, um, that tower that we had over there before we destroyed it, even a tree, you could drag a tree, a particularly nice tree if you love a tree. I don't know, maybe you love a tree. Whatever you like, whatever you find, you can make a scan and have your builders recreate it in your colony. That's a top tip. And you really just want to overlap these until they fill the entire area that you're working with. Now do be careful because if I do it like this and cover over those white bits, the builder will dig out those blocks to put the water in. And that's not really what we want because that will ruin the retaining wall. We can even go in after the fact with a bucket around the edge and tidy that edge up. But for now we want to pull away from that wall and put it one bit to the side. And here we go, looks like Ambriel Hoobies is already over here preparing the area. Now what is weird is she's digging up the construction tape as these construction tapes overlap. So, I mean, I think construction tape is something you can turn off in the config if you really want to, but oh yeah, looks like already some water has kind of gone down. So that's lots of work for these guys to do. Anyway, let's get on to the building. So what I want to do is I want to put like a ship in this harbour as well. The Droman is a bit of a beast, a bit too big for us, but there must be some other ships in here as well. So decorations, ships, and let's see what we can put down here. Maybe... Maybe a merchant ship, that might be a cool idea. Oh yeah, this looks amazing and perfect for our harbour district. Swivel it around and I reckon we could probably get two of these in here if we really did want. Park it on the edge like that and this is looking pretty frickin' cool. Now can boats reverse? I suppose they could. We'll put it in here like this, face first. Aha, now you do have to be careful because look at this. This is going to try and raise the water level quite savagely. So we have to lower this down to the level of the water. And you know what? I think that's kind of okay. What we can do is we can come back to this retaining wall, lower it down by just a little bit so that getting onto the boat is a bit easier. So we'll get that ready to go. Not too crazy materials, lots of wool, but that's fine. Oh, a cake. Wow, weird. So what about the other boats? Let's take another look. Right, the Player Explorer. This is a much bigger boat with a lot of cool stuff on it. And you know what? I think this is the perfect boat for the district as well. Yeah, this is looking amazing. This also has a level two, but we'll start with level one for now. And get this into position. And again, nothing too crazy here. A map, kind of interesting. We might have to give a map recipe to our guys armor stand grindstone oh there's a post box on here as well but it's all pretty cool stuff pretty manageable oh an enchanting table so the player explorer really is built in byzantine as a kind of base if you're looking for somewhere to set up for your own personal base then the player explorer is actually a good way of doing it so boom there we go and they'll get started on that pretty soon so what else are we going to do down here? Well, the insulate, that's right. We need more housing to get way more than 150 dudes. We're also going to have to do some research over at the university and maybe up the number that we can have in the mine colony's config. So at the moment, the config is kind of capping us at 150, I believe. But we can go and change that. Now, I reckon the tavern is going to go over here by this diagonal section. If we can find it. But we might not be able to put this down. I think, I do believe that mine colonies limits you to one tavern, but that's something we're gonna find out right now. No, here we go, right. So the amount of taverns is limited to one per colony, right. I was worried that was the case and I'm glad we found that out. So what else are we gonna do here? Well, we're gonna look into housing now. So basically we've done insulates, we've done all three of the styles, pretty much done that to death, but we've never done a regular residence. And it looks like there's three of these. Okay, weird. So we'll go for classic first. What does the classic house look like? Okay, that looks pretty slick, pretty cool, but this is only level one. So let's check it out at levels two, three. Oh yeah, now we're talking four and five. Oh man, this is a real beauty. Why haven't we done some more of these before? 
That's amazing. Well, I want at least two of these, so I'll put this down. There we go. So that's the classic. What are the other styles, though? Let's take a look. Fundamentals, house, residence. We've done classic. Now let's try modern. Now, what is modern Byzantine? I don't know. It's like modern medieval. Is that even a thing? This could be the front door. It's the only door I can see. So we'll try and line this up. Give it a healthy distance from the house next to it. And again, level this up. So we got levels one here, two, three, four, and five. Wow, oh wow, again, this looks really, really, really cool. Wouldn't mind putting one of these here as well. And we'll pull the trigger on that. So that's the two styles of houses we've looked at. What about the hillside one? That could be pretty cool. Let's take a look at that. Oh no, Jello Ronebone has drowned. Wait, was that a child? I think that was a child. I guess that's another one that failed the test. The Byzantine tests, just like the Spartans of old. She failed. So this is pretty cool. This is a house that can be designed to go on the side of a hill. Interesting. Well, we haven't really got the space to put it here because we've got a lot of retaining walls. There's no real room for this. But what does it look like in case we want to do it in the future? Oh, man, it is beautiful, though. This is level one. Level two, three. Oh, my God. Four and five. Oh, my God. This house looks freaking amazing. I've got to put this down somewhere, but there's nowhere for here. Maybe up there on the hill over there. That could be the perfect spot. Well, there you go. That's the three types of housing that we can have. But there's also some other buildings that we haven't done. So in education, it looks like there's a standalone library and we haven't built that. And there's also a simple quarry and a medium quarry. So I'm going to go back to base, build these buildings and see what these things look like as well, because I'm keen to try out all of the remaining styles of buildings that we haven't looked at. So here we go. We return to the Harbour District and let's take a look at the library. It's in fundam It's in education. Yeah, there we go. Education library. And this is the standalone library. This could be a very cool looking building. Let's find out. Oh, man. Yeah, it looks pretty cool so far. And this is level one, two, three, four and f oh, my God. This thing's amazing. Why haven't we built this before? This looks fantastic. We're going to put this down, too. Not exactly what you'd expect to find by the harbor. But you know what? We're going to do it anyway. So we're going to shuffle this around and maneuver this. So it's over here. Bring it away from that retaining wall. Yeah, do you know what? This is the perfect spot for it. Boom. We're going to pull the trigger on this. We've got the library and we've got the two residences. What about the quarries then? I've got two quarry blocks here, medium and simple quarries. We'll get a bird's eye view to view these up on this guard tower and let's see what these look like. So here we go. This is the medium quarry. Very cool looking, very cool indeed. It only has one level, so we can't really see what else it looks like, but yeah. Pretty cool, got a big wheel there and a bit of a mechanical lowering kind of lift. All right, this is, now this is the simple one. What about the medium quarry? Oh my God, yeah, as expected, this thing's pretty freaking huge. And to be honest, because stone is quite badly needed in the Byzantine style, building one of these isn't such a bad idea. Now I'm against quarries because they take forever to go through and get all the stone that you need. I prefer to do that manually, but if you do want to build a quarry, this thing looks freaking amazing. But again, it's not really something that you put inside the city. This is supposed to really go on the outskirts. So what we could actually do is put some quarries maybe out there on that land in front of the walls. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll build a gate and have a quarry out there. But for now, we're going to give our dudes what they need and watch the time lapse of these two ships and these three buildings go up. Now, it was a struggle trying to work out what to build over here because, yeah, we've built everything in the colony. But I did realize that some of the buildings that we've built are part of something else, and they usually have also standalone buildings. Now, the first house to go up was, of course, this small little modern residence. Very cool. But now it's time to swing the camera around to the harbor itself and take a closer look at these boats being built. So we did have a minor emergency while these boats were going up and while we were doing the time lapse. I didn't realize, but when I came back, one of our builders had perished. It was Leo Wolf Dragon, and he was absolutely destroyed by a zombie. So I've moved some mega torches out this way to help protect our builders from future monster attacks. 
Our new builder is called Decoy Shreve and he's a real gem, a real all-star. But yeah, you can see in the background, both of those residences now have been completed and as the rain falls, so has this boat on the right. Now it's not enough to go to level one these days. We're at the end of the colony, it's the end times. So we are taking these builds all the way from level one right up to level five. And boom, we've also added a whole load of decoration. You can see in the background there behind the church, we've got some hillside residences and some roads that hook everything up. There is also down the bottom on the left, if you can see that, a restaurant. It's also level 5 and it's underneath one of those statues, this time the cavalry statue. There's a bit of decoration but still a lot to be done, so let's jump back in. So yeah, as you can see this area looks absolutely incredible now. We've got the pier section down here that goes all the way to the water, so if we want to build ourselves a little wooden boat, we can cast off from here and go explore the wild, wild world that we haven't really kind of mapped out. Actually, no, it looks like, uh, yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this, this docks leads onto a bit of a lake. So uh, it looks like these boats aren't really going anywhere anytime soon, but that's okay because this pier looks freaking amazing. Now it's a bit rough and ready around the edge here. Maybe I could neaten this up and modify the style a bit. But yeah, as you can see, we've got these buildings up to level five because honestly, why are we settling for anything less at this point in the colony? All the recipes are locked in to all of the buildings and we've got all of the materials, so why not go all the way to five? Let's take a look inside some of these houses because they look pretty freaking cool and the attention to detail is immense. These houses are amazing. Look at this nice little dark prismarine pool. Very nice. Some azalea hedges. These are really cool, really good looking. A lot of attention and detail has gone into these builds. But also the materials to get this up to level 5 aren't super crazy. And there isn't anything at all from the end, which is really good news for us. But yeah, a perfectly sized family home for 5 new dudes. And likewise next door we have the modern house as well. And this looks pretty freaking fantastic. If we go inside here, again, yeah, a nice spacious place with loads and loads and loads of attention to detail. Honestly, Spamanti has really outdone himself with these buildings because they look amazing, super amazing. And of course, how could I forget the library over here? This is now level five as well. And again, there were some tricky blocks here. There's some gold walls up there. They're not cheap, but they're not super expensive. Likewise, the gold trim around the edge of these windows, not cheap, but it really does elevate the building massively. And there's loads of room in here, so we can hire a librarian now to come and teach our students what's going on. So who do we want to be a librarian? Who's got great stats? Some interesting dudes in here. Whoa, look at this guy. Bingo Warfish has 38 intelligence. That's nuts, and he's gonna be the perfect librarian. Super amazing, wonderful building. Now there's also still a lot of room over here at the harbor for some more buildings. It could be that we put some more houses in, maybe a barracks if a barracks will fit because we could always use more guards. Who knows? But we've kind of run out of extra buildings to build. Oh, and yeah, I think I mentioned this in the flyover, but we've got a new statue, the final statue that we're missing, the Cavalry Knight Column statue. Looks pretty cool and it's a warning to people that see our colony that heads up. We've got rude dudes on horseback that are ready to ride you down. And of course, the restaurant over here. This is also level five. And I figured we could just use another restaurant in the colony. I'm not sure if this is gonna see much use. We will need a new chef though. Let's go and see if we can hire those dudes. Looking for good stats and, hmm, don't need amazing stats for this because it is just a restaurant. But yeah, Mr. Spicy McPoodle with a name like that, you are our new cook. And assistant chef, whoa, Usagi Painotex, 27 creativity. Let's get you in the job as well. And here they are, look at these rude dudes, ready to cook up a storm. Now there's also some decoration to be done. I've added some rudimentary fences, hedges, 
and roses, but there's some big flat grass here that could use some love. And of course, not forgetting, we want to add like a nice big staircase that leads up to these other layers so you can get to the graveyard. Oh man, but I am super impressed with this area. So a massive thank you for watching this episode of Minecraft Mine Connolly's Byzantine here in All The Mods 9. It looks super amazing, I'm loving how the colony is coming together, but we're kind of reaching the end of the series. Next episode what I'm going to be doing is setting up a Builder's Hut level 5 on top of that platform over there and seeing if I can do just a big time lapse build of the cathedral. Is it the cathedral? Yeah, the massive cathedral. It's going to take our builder forever, but if we keep him pumped with the materials he needs, it should be achievable. But there's no way we can finish the Byzantine style without building that bad boy. I love the boats over here. Oh my god, it's all super amazing. We're also going to see if we can get as many buildings as possible up to level 5 next episode to see if we can cap off the series. And don't forget, if you become a member over on Patreon, you can get access to the world download. So you can download this and play it, and it's pretty freaking amazing. So a massive thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe on the video because it really helps. Once again, a massive thank you to all of my supporters, my YouTube members, and my Patreons. You guys are amazing. But until next time, take care.